This pile of various and sundry parts used to be the top boost card on that old 62-63 AC30. The video title is still saying 64 AC30 because the owner thought it was one and that's what the first video said. But if you see the video two, you'll see why I'm pretty sure it's late 62, early 63. Anyway, the top boost card was not original. It was an add-on kit. It was not the best quality. So all this has left. Why, you may ask? Well, these CTS POTS 1 meg audio taper would normally be fine, but the uh, bushing is loose in the bracket and cannot be tightened. So they have a bit of wobble to them. More distressingly, when they were turned at the point where the uh, wobble happened, the wiper was losing contact with the trace. So you get signal cut out. So into the bin, those go. Here are the... Uh, Original to the kit, but not period correct, knobs, teacup knobs. This one here has lost its its white indicator dot. This one had it. They were remarkably cheap feeling. Uh, they uh, The knurling is almost non-existent. They don't feel good. They don't look good. If the owner wants some new period correct teacups, I'll be glad to get them for him. In the meantime, as you will see, I've got some uh, chicken heads on there where you can reach around the back of the amp and feel what's going on. I uh, had a 47 picofarad silver mica cap, the dreaded SM, prone to noise, prone to leaking, gone. Shielded wires. You may say, what's wrong with those shielded wires? They look okay. Well, this one looks okay. It's mate though. The uh, shielding had been twisted so many times, it was down to like two strands and just fell apart when I touched it. And uh, I can do better, so I have. So those go in the bin. Fairly generic tube socket that came with it. Uh, all the pins were kind of mangled. I could have cleaned this up and used it, but it would have been extra time. I just went with a Belton, because I like the Beltons, and I know that I'm getting a certain level of quality. Heavy-duty 18-gauge wire for the heaters. Puts a lot of physical strain on things. Barely fit in the holes on the uh, preamp pins of the existing amp to connect the heaters. You don't need to have 18 gauge for one 12x7. So that's been replaced with some 22 gauge. You'll see that in a moment. Outstandingly cheap phenolic uh, terminal here, terminal strip. Good parts used poorly, really bad solder joints, just kind of everything holding on with a wink, a wink and a prayer. And again, 18 gauge, very stiff cables, not great connections, putting a lot of strain on the tag board. Uh, tags on the old amp and a lot of mechanical stress from just how much tension they have. They've been replaced with 22 gauge without all that tension. I can get a nice clean connection to the board without adding any stress or strain. Some nice caps that were used for the base and mids caps and there's the slope resistor, but they were just connected to each other and suspended in air and they had twisted and one of them wanted to brush up against the shell of a pot, so away they go. And a good quality F&T 22 microfarad cap there, filter cap for the added stage, but it was just hanging off like that and putting a lot of strain on its connection. Again, on one of those fragile tags, so away that goes. So let me show you what's different about the rebuilt one. In addition to having these chicken heads where you can feel the o'clock position from reaching around the back of the amp, Noon is now midway, as opposed to 6 o'clock being midway, so uh, makes a lot more sense to us being used to working that way. I guess if you're viewing the amp, looking over the back upside down, noon being 6 o'clock makes some kind of sense. But again, if the owner wants some cupcakes, I can order those. These kind of match what's on the top of the amp, and you can feel the o'clock on a dark stage. So like I mentioned, I've got a belt and socket here with the belt and cover. Um, as the app came in, underneath that cover in that socket was a Softec tube, uh, which is a fine tube, but it's prone to dying in a cathode follower stage such as this. The amp also had a JJ in the phase inverter, so I just swapped those two tubes. So the JJ ECC83 is now here in the cathode follower position where it will be fine, and the Softec is in the phase inverter where there is no really, really high cathode voltage. Flipping this around... You can see 22 gauge heater wire, tightly twisted, blue and yellow to match what's else, what the existing wire in the app, red and black, 22 gauge from, from the B plus connection and the ground. 
and two new shielded wires. The wiper of the tr treble pot and going to the grid on that uh, triode. These have some additional security here and here, and they might get a third piece depending on how much length I need once it's installed in the amp. Crucially, I added one more terminal strip here to give myself uh, better mechanical connections available. So you can see that uh, here are the treble, and, I'm sorry, the mid and base caps. There's the treble cap and everything is very secure. It's not just, this is tack soldered to that, this is tack soldered to that, and the whole thing's just hung up in the air. These cannot move, and yet there's no real st stress or strain on them. There's the new slope resistor, and all that's nice and neat. The ground is over here. I'm not using any of the terminal connections to this little bit of chassis for ground. Uh, the ground is hardwired. This will be uh, connected to the chassis when it's all in place, so there'll be shielding but that's the only role that the pot cases or this bit of metal will play as shielding. So all the grounds are made there, the two cathodes of the two tube stages and the bypass cap on one of them. There's a dropping resistor here, the 22K. And we've got this really nice Nishikon 33 microfarad 400 volt cap, very low mass. I believe it's 12,000 hours, 105 degree rated. Uh, be great. So crucially, signals up here. Heaters down here, DC in and ground down here. A nice distance to everything. A bit hard to show on camera, but the wiring at the socket is very neat uh, and reliable, which is good because once you build one of these, you don't wanna to have to go back there and, and change anything because it's, it's hard to access. Two new alpha pots, like I mentioned the CTS, which I, I had expected to keep, to keep those CTS pots, but they were physically not working very well. So these alphas, do a fine, fine job, and all the lead links are as short as possible. And this should be as close to bulletproof as such a thing ever can be. The crucial thing is when it's installed, getting the distance just right so that nothing hits here or here when it goes in. It'll be a, a close call. Things will be physically close, but they will not be touching. And that should be secure once everything is put back together. The strain relief here is really crucial. You don't want to have all the stress tugging on these solder joints, though the shielded wire I have here, I mentioned in the live stream last week, I like this stuff. It's like an RG174, but it's got 22 gauge center conductor versus 26 or 28 gauge. So it's not prone to breaking here, uh, you know, where the actual connection is made like others, other coax can be, but I, I do help it out with some strain relief. And I just had this pretty transparent stuff, though I have green at the ends here. These shielded wires will be shielded at the other end, at the at the business end uh, to the existing amp circuit. They'll be telescoped, and the only role that that will have when it's tied to ground is just for shielding. It's not passing any signal gr uh, ground, uh, you know, AC negative through the circuit. So this should be quiet, this should be reliable, this should last for decades and decades and decades. Eventually, you'll have to change tubes. The rest of it shouldn't be changed for, for almost forever. And if you do need to, it's easy to change out this radial. And it's fairly easy to change out this axial because I, I, I put that one's connection there on top. That's one of the reasons I chose this orientation for the tube so that this will be, end up being on top. You could actually change this cap uh, without taking everything apart. Um, the other advantage of doing the layout like I did is that pins four and five are on top, pin nine is on bottom. So uh, the wire, the heater wire can pass right through the center up to pins four and five and be as far from the grid connections as possible. So hope this answers some questions people had. And one other thing before I sign off on this video. In last Saturday's live stream, someone was asking about AC15 and AC30 and AC10 schematics because the ones online are rarely legible. And I mentioned this wonderful book, A Service Engineer's Guide to the Vox AC30 Valve Amplifier Revised Edition includes the AC15, AC10, and AC4 amplifiers by Stephen Grossvener or Stephen Grossvener. But uh, in that video, in addition to praising this book, I also said, oh, you can get it on Amazon or wherever online. Well, Stephen contacted me or Stephen contacted me. I need to find out his preferred pronunciation to thank me for mentioning his book and saying that he enjoys my videos, which is very nice. I enjoy his, his book, but he wanted me to mention when I got a chance 
that it is available only from his website, www.thevoxac30guide.com. And I will put that in the description below. Mine is copyright 2008. It might be some sub subsequent uh, revisions or tweaks since then. It's not an expensive book, and it pays for yourself as soon as you work on just one old JMI. And it's chock full of things that you, you really need to have to be able to make this stuff work easily. I'm not going to show you in detail because I don't want people to grab screenshots and then not buy his book, as I mentioned in the uh, live stream. He did a lot of work. This is all stuff that he has hand drawn and has done a fantastic job on and has given us so much great information here. So you need to buy this book if you're going to work on one of these. It's well worth it. It has all kinds of goodies in here. Um, I'm not being paid to mention this. I'm not being paid to do a review or anything, but uh, it's just a fantastic resource. And I think people who do good work should be rewarded.